Today I'm going to be giving some tips on using the bank reconciliation in stage 50. And um, to start a new reconciliation, you can go to the task menu and choose account reconciliation, which is down here near the bottom, just out of the view of this video. Or here from the banking tab, you can click the reconcile accounts button. Up at the top, you choose the bank account that you want to reconcile. And over here on the right, you'll put in the ending date from your statement. Then down at the bottom, you'll put in the ending balance off of your bank statement. And if you have any interest or service charges, you can click this button over here on the left to expand that section and enter those right there and put in the appropriate general ledger accounts. Then it will take care of posting a journal entry for you automatically. From there, all you have to go through, um, all you have to do is go through and check off all the transactions that have cleared on your statement. Of course, that's easier than said than done. So let's talk about some ways to make that easier. Uh, first of all, it can be it's a lot faster just to use your space bar to clear those off quickly instead of doing each one with a mouse. Um, second, when it comes time to trying to locate the transactions, you can click on any of these column headings um, to sort based on those columns. You click the same heading again, it will reverse the sort on the, on that column again. So you can sort by reference, which would be um, a check number or a, or a deposit ticket ID in most cases, um, or you can sort by date, you can sort by deposit amount, by check amount, or by payee and description. You also have the option up here of limiting your view to just checks and bank debits or deposits and bank credits or looking at all. So if resorting your list isn't enough to help you find something, then you've also got the find button up here. So you could look for um, a name, or you could look for a check number, um, or a date, or whatever you want. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that the, the dates on here, um, well, th this is just a simple text search, so which doesn't really understand dates. For example, if I type in MAR space 4, it will find that March 4th date, but if I had typed in like a date and tried to find it, it would not be able to locate it. Even your numbers, um, you know, have to have commas in them. For example, if I type in 5,000, it will not find this 5,000 right here, but if I put the comma in there, then it will. Next you have the clear button that you can use either to clear all your transactions or to unclear all your transactions. So if you just need to start over, that unclear uh, can be a really helpful shortcut. And then the multiple button here, let's scroll down a little bit. The multiple button will let you clear a whole range of transactions at once. So let's say I've got a group of checks that I want to clear from 10201 to 10210, and I click OK, and it automatically just checks all those at once for me. The next button over is the import button, so if your bank will let you download an OFX file, you can use this button to import that, and it will uh, automatically clear any transactions that it can match up. Add new button lets you jump to certain transactions that you can uh, can enter from here, but you're not limited to those. In earlier versions of Sage 50 and Peachtree, you had to close your reconciliation, go and make your new entries and come back to it. But now you can just hop right over to your main window, go in and put in, say, a new check or whatever kind of transaction it is. And we'll save that. Go back to our reconciliation and it refreshes automatically and we'll see our new check down at the bottom here. So once you get everything uh, marked cleared, down at the bottom you'll see your unreconciled difference will be zero. Now if you don't have a zero down there and you think you've got everything checked off, then the first place to go and look is up here near the top left. It shows you how many cleared checks you have and the total dollar amount and how many cleared deposits. Now those should match those same numbers on your bank statement. Um, now there is one exception to that. Um, you will find 
uh, that when you void a check in uh, in Sage 50, like here we can see we've got 102.11v, and down lower here we had check 102.11. Uh, so that check has been voided, and so the way Sage 50 handles that is it enters a a negative check, automatically marks both of them cleared on the on the bank reconciliation, so they don't hang out there forever. But that does mean that these counts and these numbers will be higher in Sage 50 than they will be on your bank statement. But again, these are a great way to try to isolate what you're looking for. Uh, for example, if, if your checks match and your deposits don't, then you know you need to look through your deposits uh, to find your difference. And speaking of not being able to find uh, all the deposits that cleared, a common problem that people have is that um, they can't get their deposit amounts in uh, in Sage 50 to match up with the amounts on your reconciliation or on your on your bank statement, and so um, usually when that happens, the best thing to do is to go and look at this bank deposit report right here. You can also get to it from the regular reports menu, but this report lists um, everything that's on each of these deposit ticket IDs. So let's say as we're going through here, we discover that um, this check right here from the 15th should have been on the 15th deposit, not on the 18th deposit. So we can double click on that. And then we can go up here to the deposit ticket ID. We can correct that, put it on the right one, save it. And then we can see that the report it now shows it on the right deposit. And when we go back to the reconciliation, it'll have refreshed and have the uh, the right deposit uh, amount on there too. So the deposit tickets are key to getting your individual receipts grouped together um, into the right deposit amount. So those are the highlights of doing bank reconciliations in Sage 50. When you're done, you've got your unreconciled difference of zero. I recommend you'll hit OK to save that. And I suggest you come to your reports uh, menu down to account reconciliation and run this account reconciliation report. And here you'll see that it'll walk you through going from your beginning GL balance and uh, your outstanding deposits or uh, deposit in transit and outstanding checks and uh, work out the reconciliation to get back down to your uh, ending GL balance shows your uh, unreconciled difference there. And just print that report off, file it with your bank statement, so it'll have uh, documentation that you um, that you've completed your your reconciliation. In case ever anything comes up later, uh, someone deletes the transaction, changes it, can throw off your reconciliation. Anyway, I hope you find that helpful and that it makes your bank reconciliations a little bit easier.